Let's get started creating our facial grid for the model. That's again the, the facial grid that we laid out over our photo reference. Before we do that though, we want to make sure that our model here is fitting within a plane that makes it really easy for us to adjust. So you'll notice that uh, the chin is coming out a little bit from the bottom and uh, the width is not matching up per se. And that's because the way we pulled the, the jaw out and the sphere that was originally there just left our proportions within ZBrush to, with a little bit to be desired. Easy to fix though. Come into Tool Palette, Deformation, click Unify. Keep in mind that this modifies your world scale for the model. So you don't want to do this if you've got uh, this skull relating to other objects. You'll have to rescale it later. But if you're following this tutorial, this will work just fine. So now we can see that from a side view, it lines up just fine. From a front view, we can go into Scale drag out an action line and pull this back to 0.75 and we can quite clearly see the high point lining up. I am going to make a change to this though before we do the grid and it's a change I want you to make as well and that's just to straighten this line up a little bit. Get the side plane of that face a little bit cleaner. In this case it's pulled in a bit too much. So to do that I'm just going to use the move brush and really what I want to move is this planar transition from the front of the face to the side of the face. So that means that I'm adjusting this plane and where this line is. Just making it wider. That'll work quite well. A little bit straighter. Okay. And that'll accept more of the front facial grid that we're going to need to put in there. So we've got the measurements set, but we don't have anything that says, say, uh, one eighth of a width, let's say, because, for example, the width is. 0.75 or if you go straight across it's 1.5 how do you get 1 8 of that well you gotta break open the calculator or let me show you a really cool trick you have to take the preference palette send it over to the tray and you want to be opening the transpose units sub palette what we want to do is pull out from the center straight out Press shift to constrain it and then move in. Move in till you get roughly at that, that point, the full width here. And then you come into calibration distance and you set that to one. When you set it to one, the units all the way up here at the top, they change to one. And then we want to come into minor ticks. This is where this is really useful. Notice how in our transpose line now we have basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So anywhere that there is a unit of 1, there's going to be 10 tick marks. And that's defined by this guy, minor ticks. See, it's set at 10. Now what happens if we take that? and we adjust that to 3 let's say well you get 3 tick marks so that's what we need we need that number we're gonna set our unit of measurement here these in this minor tick we're gonna set it to 4 why are we setting it to 4 because remember we're using half or really just a quadrant of this face so we've got four units that we're measuring on the right. We've got four measurements that we're using on the left. So together, that's going to equal or give us our one-eighth units. So this space right here, from the outside to one-eighth of a unit in, 
is representative of where the end of the orbit of the eye is. 1 16th, we're cutting that in half and we're moving up and now we're starting to get the orbit of the eye in the right place. Pulling down, getting this, all of the rest of these guys established. So let's keep this at 4 and then constantly use that line to uh, help us in our drawing. So let's start with poly painting. We need to divide the model at least once, but I'm going to try to get it up to 400,000. I'm going to go into the standard brush and I'm going to turn Z add off. Have to turn Z add off. And then now we can just draw, set our color to black. Make sure you turn the paintbrush icon on, which will enable poly painting. Make sure perspective is off and just sketch your halfway point. All right, show our grid just by pressing W. And I'm going to get the outer mark, draw mode. Press W, go back into the move mode. Get my cursor positioned, draw mode, and there we go. Okay, and so now we've got the boundaries of the orbit of the eye here. And you might start to be worrying about what's happening with the cheek on the outside. But don't sweat it. We're going to be adjusting and sculpting all of that. Now we need to get the height. So this is where we've got to come in, get our measurement, and then just pull that straight up. Okay, so that's one eighth. Now we're going to take that measurement downwards as well. Okay, so now we've got a block in for the orbit of the eye. Remember to take that measurement for the half of the orbit of the eye straight down to create the bottom of the nose. And then we're going to divide the rest of the space pretty much in half. And that's going to be the line of my teeth. Remembering that the line of the lips is a little bit higher. All right. We also know that the top part of the nasal ridge is right here where the nasal opening is. And so let's change our color slightly. Remember that we have to cut for the glabella. We have to cut for the overhang. We have to cut for that lower corner of the eye. The, uh, the frontal process of the maxilla right here. opening for the nostril and then of course the cheek now we need to come in and say define this orbit of the eye a little bit more clearly because our unit of measurement actually bisected that. So I'm going to use my red lines to just be more clear about where that is. Okay. So there's our measurements fairly intact. We're going to go with the orbit of the eye slightly inside. We're going to make it a little smaller than it is here, but we're in okay shape. Now I'll just do a little sketching just to make sure I know. I'll do it in blue. So this is the maxilla, the teeth. The jaw is going to hit an angle right here. Horseshoe shape. Okay, temporal line, 
frontal process, glabella and the superciliary arch, and there we go. Looks like we're within range. Now we need to get in and start to sculpt this and define every uh, everything in terms of its uh, forward or Z depth relationship. So the side view is really the next thing for me to evaluate. 